Sorry, it took me so long to get to class. I just finished up with my other class. Uh, talking too much about uh, angle measures in trigonometric functions. All right. Um, going to be a beautiful day outside. So let's get going with this. Get done and get outside and enjoy the warm weather. I love this time of year when it gets warm. Love the sun, love the warmth. And this is the time of year where being an online student, it's awesome because I just take a look at the weather for the week and Monday's supposed to be nice, Tuesday's supposed to be nice, Wednesday and Thursday's supposed to rain. So it's like, oh, I'll do all my extra stuff on Wednesday and Thursday because it's gonna be raining, gotta be inside anyways. Today and tomorrow, I'll be outside, except tomorrow, I have to be up in Green Bay doing the ACT testing. Yeah, bummer. <laughs> but I suppose it is what it is. All right, at least I'll be able to drive home with my windows open. Yes. This week, we are going to be talking about exponential growth and decay, um, the equation. Now, there's really two equations that we're going to be using today. Um, the first one is a sub t is equal to a and then 1 plus r to the t power. This is an exponential equation because there is an exponent in it. Um, that means it is going to be. Uh, let's hear. I want to be over bleep it. You mean the ACTs you want it to be over? Yeah, well, it'll, it will be over tomorrow. Just do your best. Um, it's all we can ask for. All right, so if I gave you an equation like, let's say I said the fish population of Negawicka Lake is, or the, the um, walleye population of the the population of walleye in the lake, uh, Negawicka Lake, is increasing at a 10% rate every year. My equation, and I, I then I could have an equation that looks like this. The amount, whoops, I turn my marker on so it works. I could go a sub t is equal to, uh, let's say, 4,000, and then um, let's go 1.10 because that would be 10% per year times t. Okay, so what does this 4,000 represent? What does that 4,000 represent in this problem? The initial amount. So that means there are 4,000 walleye in Lake Negawicka at time zero. So let's say I this equation, you always have to decide when is this equation written? If it was written in uh, the year 2020, okay? So let's say that this equation was written in 2020. 2020. Okay. And I want to know what the population of the fish is going to be in the year 2025. How would you solve that? Would you put 2025 in for T? And if you did, who would be a lot of fish in the lake after five years, but yes, we would only put in T is equal to five because this is my starting point. This is when T is equal to zero. So 2025 would be five. I put five in here. If I quickly put this into my calculator, um, I would tell you that there would be, let's go 1.10 uh, raised to the, it is a change in years. That is exactly right. Uh, raised to the fifth power is equal to times 4,000. There would be in the year 2025, there would be 6,442 fish walleye in the lake if the, the walleye population increases at 10% a year. This is what we call an increasing uh, or an exponential growth because this is greater than one. Now, let's say I have the same problem. I gave you a sub t is equal to 4,000 and then 0 0.90 to the t. Okay, so what does this tell me? What does because these equations, when you look at them, they should tell you something right away. So first thing it tells me, how many fish are in the lake at time zero? Okay. How many fish are in the lake in at time zero? 4,000, okay. What is the, the amount of decrease uh, what is the rate of decrease of the uh, population of the, the fish in this lake? Because I know it's less than one, so I know the population is decreasing. 
What is the rate of decrease in this population? Of fish? 10%, very good. A lot of kids would say 90%, but it's one minus R. So one minus 10% gives me 90%. So yes, the population of fish are decreasing at 10%. And then if I asked you a question, I said, okay, how many fish are gonna be in the lake in, in the year 2025? Same thing, I would just plug five in for uh, the time and I would get my answer. So this is called an exponential um, growth and decay function. Now, sometimes we use this function. It's very similar to the exponential growth function, but this is called the PERT function. This is when it's continuous growth, okay? So let's say I gave you this function. I said 4,000 E to the R T, and usually they'll tell us what R is. So let's say I gave you 4,000 E to the 0.15 T, okay? And this is my equation I gave you, okay? What does the 4,000 tell us? Okay, 4,000 tells us, and I, I didn't say if this was a fish population or anything else, it's an initial value. What does the 0.5 tell me? Okay, what is the 0.5? It is the rate, that's exactly, the, that's exactly right. So this, this is what we call a continuous function where things are growing at a continuous rate, um, and I don't know why sometimes they you'll, they'll use one and sometimes they use the other, but th that's basically what it is. Okay, so we have two formulas that we're gonna be using tonight. I think the practice is fairly easy this week. I'm not even gonna uh, give you guys the Desmos presentation um, since we only have a few kids. It's kind of a, a waste to, to write those up, but let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the problems for this week. Problem number one. It says the number of bacteria in a culture is modeled by the function nt is equal to 600 e to the 0.5 t, where t is measured in hours. What is the initial number of bacteria? I mean, how easy can a problem get, right? When you think about, I mean, it, it looks, you know, a lot of kids, they worry about the word problems and all that. And it's like, oh, this problem is just asking me, what is the initial amount? It's right there, 600. And I could figure that out if I didn't know better, I could do this, I could go, okay, 0.5, the initial amount, well, the initial amount should be when T is equal to zero, right? So if I put zero in here, 0.5 times zero is zero, E to the zero, well, anything raised to the zero is one, so this would just be 600 times one, which is 600. We don't need to do all that work. We know that this is the initial value right off the bat. So my answer should be letter E. All right. Problem number two, it says a fox population in a certain region has a relative growth rate of 7% per year. It is estimated that the population in 1997 was 18,000. Find a function n of t that models the population t years after 1997. All right, now you don't have to write in the equation. If you wanna just put down what letter it would be, that would be fine. Letter E, Letter E, you both agree with letter E, okay? So if I was going to write this down, the initial population is 18,000. It looks like they're using the PERT formula, so I'm just gonna go E, the rate is 7%, well, 7% as a decimal is 0 0.07, so I've got 0 0.07 to the T. I would agree that letter E is the correct answer. Very nice. All right, number three. It says, which of the following equations represents an exponential decay? All right, so which one of those represents exponential decay? Letter E, I agree, why? Well, the reason is the base, if the base is less than one, and this is the base because it has the exponent, so this is less than one. Now, some kids would say, well, why isn't it D? Well, the base for letter D is two because the two has the variable on it or the exponent. So the base here is two. Here, the base is four. Here, the base is two. Here, this is a quadratic, so it's not even an exponential function. So this is the only one that the base is less than one. So letter E is the correct answer. 
fairly easy stuff this week. And I did it on purpose. Um, I knew there was ACT testing and some kids are juniors. So I kind of made it a little bit easier this week. All right. Oh, I got a paragraph to read on this one. It says, which of these equations correctly represents the following scenario? In her prime, 40 million people knew who Britney Spears was. But that number has been decreasing by 10% each year. So since 90% of people still recognize her each year, how many people still know who Britney Spears is each year? Okay, so which one of those equations would represent? When in doubt, pick E, right? <laughs> um, let's see here. I would agree with that. Because this time we're using this formula. We're using the um, a sub t is equal to p one plus. Oh, this would be one minus, right? Because it's it's going down. One minus r to t power. Well, my initial was forty million people, and then one minus r. Well, the rate at which it was decreasing is ten percent each year. So that's point uh, point one zero. So 1 minus 0.10, that's 0.9 to the T. And that is letter E. All right. Any questions so far on this stuff? Now, there are going to be a couple where you're going to have to solve. All right. So let's try. I don't know which one we have to solve. This one, I guess we have to solve. It says, Olivia, purchase a musical a music system worth 18,000 in the year 2001. It loses its value by 6% per year. What is the value of the music system in 2003? Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys work on this one. Which answer up there doesn't make any sense at all? I mean, that we can cross off. Is there one up there that, yeah, D doesn't make any sense. Um, She's the, the music system is losing value, and this one it gained value. So I'm going to cross that one off right away because that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so give it a shot, see what you get, and then we'll go through setting it up and solving. All right, letter C, let's take a look. If I was going to do this problem, the initial value is 18,000. It's a pretty expensive music system, but hey. And then I'm gonna do, um, I'm just gonna do the one plus. Uh, I mean, it, it could be a PERT formula, but I'm just gonna do the one plus. So um, loses, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna do the one minus uh, 0 0.06 to the T power. Computer parts aren't cheap but it was a music system. When I think of a music system, I think of eh, maybe a, you know, a radio. A, I suppose you've got the subwoofers and woofers and all that. Yeah, I suppose 18,000. I would never spend that kind of money on a music system. Uh, <laughs> I'm a cheap, I'm, I'm a type one, so that, that would never happen. All right, so then I'd have 18,000 um, and then one, um, <laughs> one minus 0 0.06, so that would be 0 0.94. And then I go from 2001 to 2003, that's two years, right? So I'm gonna go, let's see here, 0 0.94 raised to the second power, and then times uh, 18,000. I end up with 15,904. I would say that letter C is the correct answer. So we'd end up with 15,904.48. Now, did either of you guys use the PERP formula on this one? Because I, I bet you the answer is really close. I mean, I, I would assume um, that it would be. So you've got 18,000 E to the, what is that? Um, 
0 0.06 times 2. Can somebody put this into your calculator and see what you get? Oh, um, shouldn't we be able to? I don't think so, because it's going to increase, right? Yeah, I don't think we can use PERT formula when it, eh, like, I think it would have to be negative then, wouldn't it? Maybe it would have to be negative. Okay, let's not even let's not let's not hurt our brains this morning. All right, let's just stick with the fifteen thousand nine hundred four. All right. So next question. It says an initial investment of nine thousand dollars grows at an annual interest rate of five percent, compounded continuously. When it says compounded continuously, they're talking about the PERT formula. Okay, so this is definitely a PERT formula. How long will it take to double the investment? Ooh, I love this problem. All right. I am going to let you guys work on this problem for a little bit, okay? And the reason is because it's, it's, a, it's a good problem. And then we'll go over it. So you guys work on it, see what you get. And don't just say letter E just for the fun of it. <laughs> Give it a shot. All right, let's check this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the problem up. So I've got 9,000 E to the RT. So that's going to be 0 0.05 T. But it says an initial investment of $9,000 grows to an annual interest, grows at an annual interest rate of 5% compounded continuously. How long will it take the money, the investment to double? Well, in order to double, that means my answer should be 18,000, shouldn't it? All right. So this is the equation I have to solve. Oh, thank goodness we solved logs and exponents. So I'm going to divide both sides by 9,000. So this is going to be 2 is equal to e to the point 0, 0,5t. Oh, that's an exponent. I'm going to rewrite it as a logarithm. So the log base e of 2 is equal to the power is over 9,000. The power is over 9,000. I don't know what you mean there. Oh, <laughs> all right. So the log base E of 2 is equal to 0 0.05 T. 
I do not have, uh, so this is, the log base E is really natural log. Can somebody tell me what the natural log of two is? My calculator, I have just a real tiny scientific one that doesn't even have a log on it. What is the natural log of two? Point six nine three one is equal to point zero five t, and then my last step would be to divide through. So this one really took a little bit of work to get the answer. So point point six nine three one divided by point zero five, I end up with thirteen point eight six. As my answer. That is a good problem because it really makes you think. It makes you, you have to be able to set up the equation. You have to be able to solve a exponential equation. So it kind of goes back and goes through what we've learned in the last couple of weeks. Good problem there. Like it. Awesome. Not real difficult, but makes you think about what's going on. All right. The number of bacteria in a culture is modeled by the function n of t is equal to 100 e to the 0.35 t, where t is measured in hours. What is the initial number of bacteria? Oh no, we go from hard to super easy. So my answer is letter E, 100. The initial um, value or the initial is 100, excellent. The fox population in a certain region has a relative growth rate of 0.6% per year. It is estimated that the population in 2000 was 19,000. Find the function that models the population T years after 2000. Boy, there's so many answers that are... <laughs> there are so many answers that are letter E. I agree that letter E is the correct answer. Okay, so being able to set up an equation, obviously, is an important concept this week. This one we're going to have to solve. It says, Matthew bought a laptop for 34000 in the year 2008. Are you kidding me? Who would pay 34000 for a laptop? That's kind of crazy. All right, so let's just go along. Matthew bought a laptop for 34000 in the year 2008. Its value depreciated by 4% per year. What is the value of the laptop in the year 2011? <laughs> I guess 2008. Holy moly, that was a long time ago to be worth 34,000. All right. <laughs> What's my answer? And this time you cannot say E. And the reason is. There is no E for an answer. Woot woot. <laughs> now I know you. Well, if that's how you're going to answer your ACT test tomorrow, shame on you. <laughs> no E for an answer. All right. So let's take a look here. <laughs> In spite of me. All right. So if I was going to do this problem, uh, letter B, I'm going to go 34,000 is my initial value, and then uh, depreciates at 4%, so I'm going to go 1 minus 0 0.04, and then I go from the year 2008 to 2011, so that looks like three years here. So this is going to be 34,000 times 0.96 to 3. And we get 30,081 for our answer. Okay, so as I said, the, the stuff that we're working on this week, fairly easy, shouldn't cause too many problems at all. Here's another one. It says, in 1995, there were 85 rabbits in Central Park. <laughs> I always figure out how, how do you figure out there's 85 rabbits there? Uh, the population increased by 12% each year. How many rabbits were in Central Park in 2005? Okay, so 
Well, none of those answers kind of make sense, do they? I mean, they're all dollar signs. I hope, hopefully, hopefully one of them, well, D obviously can't be an answer. I mean, D is 23.67. There's no way it could be less than 85. I'm looking at 12% um, for 10 years. That's gonna more than double the population. <laughs> yeah, you get paid to catch them. All right, so we've got, let's see here. We've got 85 rabbits to the initial population. And I'm going to use, uh, boy, when you're dealing with population, you should always use the PERT formula, but I'm not 100% sure that that's going to work. So we'll just do 85, then 1 plus 0.12, um, and that's to the 10th. So 85, 1.12 to the 10th power. Okay, let's see what I get there. Um, 1.12 raised to the 10th. And then I have to multiply that by 85. 263 or 264? I'm gonna go with, are you guys okay with letter B? I ended up with 263.997. So I'm gonna go with letter B. All right, any questions up until now? Anything that blowing your mind away? That, as I said, it should be fairly easy stuff. Now the assessment this week, I'm not even sure if I have a question from the assessment. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. So the depreciation of the value of a car is modeled by the equation 100,000 times 0.85x for x years since 2000. In what year? Ooh, I like this problem. I think this is a problem off the assessment this week. Um, in what year was the value of the car $61,412.50? Okay. So work that one out. See what you get. And that will be it for today. And then you guys get, then your homework for today is to get outside and enjoy the weather. As soon as you get, or when you get an answer, uh, put it in the text box, and then we'll see what see what we get. Uh oh, no answers yet. Three years, 15%, it's going down pretty fast. Three years, that sounds, that seems about right because it is dropping pretty fast. Okay, so if I was going to solve this problem, I'm gonna go $61,412.50 is equal to 100,000 times 0.85 to the X. In order to solve this, I'm going to divide through by 100,000. Now, let's see here. I think I need another zero here. Nope, I don't. Okay. Um, so if I get that, I'm going to plug that in my calculator. Oh, I suppose it's only going to move my decimal point, isn't it? Um, five places. 
So one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be 0 0.61412 is equal to 0.85 to the x, if I'm doing this right. And then I'm going to change this to a log. So that's going to be log base 0 0.85 to the 0.61412 is equal to x. Again, I don't have a, a logarithm as anybody. <laughs> I, I suppose I can use the decimals calculator. Uh, so that's log 0.85 to the 0.6142. So I'm just going to jump in to my decimals calculator and do a log function here. Uh, let's see here. I like this. I like the um, log function on decimals because you can put in you can put in any base you want. So I've got the log base 0 0.85, 0 0.85 to the point, point six one. Oops, oh, remember what it was. 0 0.6141. 0 0.61. 0 0.61. Four, one. And I come up with 3.00025. So three years is exactly right. Any questions on any of that stuff? All right. You guys have an amazing day again. Get outside. Enjoy the weather. It's beautiful outside. <laughs> Bye.